Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Only Run Very Noob Plays Bravo. Today we are playing against Uzuri the Switchblade. Um, I go up to 63 cards in this matchup because it can be kind of grindy and fatiguey. I side out Zealous Belting and Choke Slam. Not entirely sure if it's correct. I think Zealous Belting could be pretty good into any sort of fatigue matchup with Anothos. Just kind of afraid of it only blocking one after I get hit by a spider's bite, but not too sure if that's correct. So we win the die roll and go first. We're just going to play this Terra Sunder. Uh, we just kind of want to leak damage and maybe fatigue him a couple cards. Um, unmovable in Arsenal is also like decent. Although we do get hit by an inertia trap, so we uh, we have to lose our arsenal here, which is pretty annoying. It's pretty good for them. We see they're presenting quite a few cards, 70 or 71, and they have the Mask of Perdition, so this has got to be like the contract style, where they're trying to fatigue us. We draw kind of a clunker. Um, can't really easily block six. I do notice that they pitch a yellow sink below, which is very interesting. I've like never seen that card, although I think it's perfectly reasonable. I think it's a card that probably should see more play than zero. And then he just uh, throws an amnesia at us. Um, I don't hate taking six here, to be honest. We can sigil back up to be at life parity. We can make a surge and send hammer for six, pitching the spinal crush and the disable, and then arsenaling the pummel. Um, I don't really love to rely on my arsenal against Azuri. They just have so many ways to disrupt your arsenal. But I do think a Pummel and Arsenal is worth more than the two points it would give us if we blocked with it. So, always something to consider. Blocks with a Sensor and a Leave No Witness. Um, definitely don't see Sensor that often. Hmm. Again, no d react so we can't really stop their swap easily without just over-blocking. I generally like to just take the daggers. He throws his Leave No Witnesses, and it's a little interesting for us here. I'm going to pause it. Against Azuri, it can be kind of hard to utilize armor, because we don't want to use it to over-block, anticipating like a swap, because then they can just like not swap and eat up our armor. Generally, the only times you get a lot of value off your armor into Azuri is when they um, codex or just throw like a raw attack at you. So I think here I'm sort of inclined to block with armor and then pummel the Spinal Crush, arsenaling the Starstruck. Um, life totals are very important against Azuri. I think this is the matchup where it's like the life totals sort of indicate who's winning the game more than any other matchup. Um, so I'm happy to just spinal or pummel the spinal and arsenal the starstruck. Um, the other line would be like dominating the spinal and then pummeling it and having nothing in arsenal, but with a uh, pummeled spinal crush. Hopefully it buys us enough tempo to hold our arsenal, although it doesn't really stop them from swapping if they wanted to. So during this game I do elect to uh, arsenal the Starstruck instead of using it for Dominate. Um, blocking to leave no witnesses with armor. If he has shred to like kill my crater fist, then he has shred. 
I don't have too much to say about that. Like, I like to just make them have it. I'm not playing around shred ever. Because if you play around shred, you basically give them the shred value anyway. So he blocks a bunch to mitigate some damage, but he still does have to discard. So off one his one card hand, we're definitely going to just be able to keep the starstruck here. Um, I don't want any of these blues in Arsenal. Like none of them excite me to play. And probably trying to crown after like a Codex or on a CNC or something. So I'm just going to make a Surge instead of Arsenal one of these blues. So make a Surge, dominate the Starstruck, and hope we catch him without a React in Arsenal. Because if we do so, then he basically just can't do anything. I mean, he could block with armor and a 3 block and then send a 6, I guess. Uh, yeah, so I guess they can do something if they want to give us the 2 armor block they have. Or the 2 easy to give up armor block they have. I'm, not, I'm sure they don't want to give up Flick Knives yet. So they could block three from hand and yeah, the mask and the boots. And this allows them to still throw a six at us, although they can't dagger. They can't play any of their contracts. They can't play any of their stealth attacks. Um, so that's pretty good for us. We're going to be able to see what's coming before we decide to defend. Throws a Command and Conquer at us. I'm inclined to just block three and then pummel a hammer. Um, protecting life total by blocking six is fine, but what isn't fine is blocking with the pummel or arsenaling the pummel. Don't really like to utilize my arsenal that much. I have my hand over pass here. I'm thinking maybe I want to just take an extra three to pummel like the buckling blow maybe but I don't think that's worth it uh, that would be like take three to deal an additional three on the discard um, but they might not even discard if they just like block six and have a react so I'd rather just take the three value now when it's guaranteed instead of the potential three value of pummeling an attack sort of the same value rate except this way we get to guarantee the value and then we do pummel uh, it's only four damage but we don't like to have stuff in arsenal and at these life totals I'm starting to feel like um, I'm pulling ahead again probably just looking to block three and pummel a hammer uh, expecting a swap into something if he swaps into Shakedown, we just hammer for four and Arsenal the Pummel, which isn't great, but it's not the worst Shakedown in the world. He elects to not swap into anything and not Dagger, so I feel like it was probably two reds, probably a React, because uh, just like two random reds, I feel like he might pitch to Dagger. And he's blocking six. He's definitely trying to do like a fatigue sort of plan, although he has twice as many cards in his graveyard as us. Um, we already have more cards in deck, even though he started with eight more cards in deck than us. So definitely feeling good about our position in this game. I think they're going to have to switch to a more proactive plan because they're just not going to be able to fatigue us, I don't think. The dreaded all for red hand. So there's a couple things we could do here. We could just block three and throw the Command and Conquer by pitching two reds. We could block three and expect a swap. Fate for Scene post-swap. 
uh, make a surge and arsenal crippling crush. But I kind of like getting a little greedy here and using the crown. Because if we use crown, we can crown, block two, crown spinal crush to the bottom, looking for a blue. And if he swaps in, we can still fate for scene up to six to stop whatever the swap is. Make a surge, command and conquer, and arsenal crippling crush. Again, I keep saying I don't really like to utilize the arsenal if I don't have to, but with a card like Crippling Crush, it can be pretty hard to play it without it being an arsenal. And these big attacks that are going to force like multiple blocks, or like they're going to force multiple cards no matter what. If they get hit by it, they're going to lose cards and life. If they decide to block it, they're going to lose three cards and two life, generally. And I think. Resolving Crippling Crush into Zuri is like huge. It adds quite a bit to your win rate. So let's see what I like to do here. I do believe I crown though. Yeah, I like the crown fate for scene line. The only thing it really gets doesn't get stopped by anything actually, because I can fate for scene in response to the swap. So even Command and Conquer gets blocked because I haven't blocked from hand yet. He likes to not do anything. Now this might be kind of annoying because we're stranded with this fate for scene we wanted to get value out of. But one of the only cards they would keep behind that's not something that they want to swap is a defense react. And that's like the exact card we want them to have when we're commanding conquering them. They have tunic up so if it's oasis respite then you know they get their value. Um, but I think they have more sync fate, and we've even seen yellow sync below. So I think they have more defense reactions that aren't Oasis Respite than they have that are Oasis Respite. So we're fairly happy to do this. We see a brutal assault, so they're they, they're probably playing like every two cost six power three block that they can, because I imagine brutal assault is like the last one you would play. We've already seen an amnesia. Definitely looking to sink below a sink below into a blue so we can just throw naked, naked crippling. But we're not going to sink below the dagger, of course. And this one hurts. They, they command and conquer us, which they elected to not swap in last turn. And we have three defense reactions, and we used our crown. So this is definitely a really ugly spot. Um, I elect to just take six, lose the defense react, and hammer for six and arsenal react. I don't know exactly how I'm supposed to play this turn out. Um, that's definitely very ugly. Oh no, I only hammer for four. I guess I really want to resolve this Crippling Crush, which seems reasonable for all the reasons I listed before. Resolving a Crippling Crush into Azuri is uh, incredibly strong. I don't know if it's worth like holding it and then dealing two less damage here. Um... I don't know. Maybe I got too fixated on playing this Crippling Crush. Because life points really matter in this matchup. And he's already caught up to me completely here. An E strike for 5 go again. I just go down to 19, um, definitely waiting for something better. On this isolate, I think I give him armor so I can block two, and then uh, sink below, 
uh, whatever six he would might want to swap in. And then I can play a Crippling Crush, an Arsenal Crippling Crush, which is definitely very strong because the first Crippling Crush ought to, ought to give us the tempo and room to play the second one. He could always block with three cards, have a Stealth and Arsenal, and then like a Shakedown in hand that he doesn't block with. Missouri has quite a high level of maneuverability. Um, with only two card hands, they can still disrupt your turn. But I definitely still like planning to throw two Crippling Crushes here. He doesn't Flick Knives this. Um, often when I see them Flick I see them Flick Knives much later in the game. Uh, good Azuris at least. Because they want to keep both their daggers. When we catch him with two no blocks in hand, he gets to gain some life. But he's going to go down to 18 here, I believe. Oh no, he has a yellow sink below. So we don't even get a discard effect. We just get to deal five. And move on. But luckily he can't have a disruptive turn here. I'm just going to dominate the crippling and arsenal the rouse. Um, I thought quite long about arsenaling the unmovable, I think. But I decided on rouse because resolving a rouse is very, very, very hard to do against Azuri because you need four cards. But hopefully the crippling crush gives us the room to resolve it and it'll be very good. Um, I don't think they're going to fatigue us. We're up like 10 cards already. Um, but still, Rouse the Ancients is 13 damage that only represents one card fatigued. So I'm always very happy to play a Rouse if I get enough room to do so into Azuri. It's just a lot of damage and very good fatigue rate. We catch him with another no block in hand this turn in the Remembrance. And he decides just to take 11. Um, I guess it's better than taking 8 and not having a turn, maybe. Maybe he was really hoping to have that leave no witnesses. Oh, and either way, he had Tunic, so no matter what card he kept, the Censor, this Contract card, Annihilate the Armed, or Leave No Witnesses, he would have been able to play out a threat. We get a hand that can enable Rouse, so we just block 3. We don't mind getting uh, Mill the card because we're just probably going to win on Fatigue, if that's the plan. And we're also up 9 life, which is huge, or 7 life, I guess, after we take this 2. And we get to Rouse the Ancient Sim. So I definitely love my spot right now. Feels like I'm kind of running away with the game with the double crippling into a Rouse. Which is exactly what we needed after getting Command and Conquered with 3 Reacts in hand. So it looks like he might just be planning to block out. I am going to end up arsenaling the Thunderquake because with two blues it represents eight damage which is a little bit more than the six from Anothos. And with him having such a small hand he's probably not going to threaten our arsenal here. And even if he does threaten our arsenal like we're not that sad to lose Thunderquake. Just a lot of small reasons why I want to keep the Thunderquake. He just passes. I think I throw the Thunderquake, gain three life, and then Arsenal Starstruck. There's a couple lines you could take. You could just throw the Starstruck while pitching this sigil and keeping Thunderquake in Arsenal. Um, Thunderquake's just damage, so he can take as much of it as he wants, but with the life totals where they are, I don't see him not trying to defend it. Um, I feel like I'm going to get at least two cards here, like every time. Uh, if he goes down to like four or something, that's not great. Four or five. But he might feel like he needs to mount some sort of offense here. No, we do get two cards, only deal one damage, but we get to gain three and arsenal a threat. 
They certainly have enough cards to disrupt us with the two in hand one in arsenal, but that's okay. Draw a little bit of a clunker here. We can only block three, and he's going to be able to swap in whatever he wants, and we're not going to be able to do anything about it. If it destroys Arsenal, though, we get to... He doesn't swap. So he doesn't block with his cards. He doesn't use them on his turn. It seems like pretty big value leak. But since that's what happens, we just hammer for six, gain three, and move on. But I'm not really sure what his cards could be that he would do that. I, I don't think there's any cards that you wouldn't want to block some damage on that Thunderquake. Oh no, he did block it. He blocked seven on eight, huh? Yeah, so maybe he just didn't want to use one of them to only block one and get fatigued faster. That makes some sense. Um, with two reacts, a Command and Conquer and a blue, I'm looking to just use one react. Um, make a Surge, Command and Conquer, and then Arsenal the other react. With our life lead, we can take three damage here. We don't have to try to block this out. We can even set up our next draw with Favor Scene. Not sure if I should top or bottom the Rouse, but I bottom it. I think topping it might be a little greedy. Command and Conquer has got to be good against his build because he's got at least nine reacts with six sinks and three fates. I have to imagine he's playing red sink and red fate before he starts including yellow sink below. Yeah, here it's fairly straightforward again. Block three. We have the react in Arsenal. And then make a surge, Command and Conquer, and Arsenal and Unmovable. Being up 12 life at this point in the game, uh, I definitely feel in the driver's seat. We just have to keep enacting our game plan. Oh yeah, don't do hammer. Do command and conquer, and then arsenal immovable. And he's got to make something happen, because if he just keeps blocking and going to fatigue, we're going to out-fatigue him. Because I would normally just block six here, but because it's isolate, we can't. So I'm just going to use our unmovable from arsenal. And then make a surge, hammer six, and arsenal the other immovable. Pretty straightforward turns when you draw just like four blues like this. Maybe you could make an argument for making a surge and throwing Cranial Crush to just like leak through damage to put him closer to dead, but the, having the React in Arsenal is just such a huge safety net against Azuri that I think it's definitely reasonable and probably the stronger, safer play. Because here we can even block 6 because of the unmovable and send a dominated Spinal, which is probably the plan. Probably pitching Terra Sunder so we get back to it faster if we're ever afraid. He attacks with Nerf Scalpel. It's going to make our unmovable not worth six. But then he also just throws an Eradicate. Doesn't have stealth so he can't swap. The only thing he could really do is shred us. But being up ten cards in deck, like I'm perfectly okay with just like unmovableing this for five and eating the shred. I have to imagine with two cards behind he has a shred or like a random pump. I forget what the one that's what it's called. So he has blue shred. He gets two cards because of the mask. Doesn't get any silver. We play very few yellows. And then we dominate this spinal. Even if he has a reactant arsenal, it's going to leak like two. Um, and with him being at five, any damage we can leak is just going to be so impactful to the way that he has to play his turns. Uh, 
Um, surges are okay in this matchup, but they're not like worth not dominating for. So we see him completely block out because, yeah, he's uh, two reacts and equipment. He's just must feel like he's at such a low life that he's got to protect all the points that he can. Um, with our threat of dominate, like any turn we want, uh, he probably doesn't want to take points that he could avoid. So yeah, shakedown, we block six. Even if he has shred and names blue, we still get the hammer for four. He doesn't, so we get to make a surge and hammer for six. And with him having 14 cards in deck and us having uh, 29, uh, there's just like no threat of getting fatigued. We also have so much life that he's not going to be able to fatigue us through damage or flip the tempo. I don't like to say games are over until they're over, but this game feels pretty over. Like The life total discrepancy is hugely impactful. This is like the matchup, like I said earlier, where life totals just mean so much. And I'm okay taking six here. I'm just hoping it's not a shakedown. It ends up being a shakedown. He names red. Um, I believe I just make a surge and throw eight. You could arsenal the rouse, but I just want to get my points now. I've noticed that he's been trying to block all the points he can, so he might even get three cards here. And that'll really set us up to play whatever we want off the top. Many calculated risk last turn, because if he doesn't have shakedown exactly, like literally every other uh, six attack that he could swap in when it impact our ability to rouse the ancients. And I felt we had enough life to give him six to take that risk. Um, yeah, we're just like almost never blocking spiders by totally a final taking totally final taking nerve scalpel two with only one card behind. He can't um, even two cost six us because tunic's not up. He codexes, so he's going to get a Leave No Witness, and I'm going to get a Crippling Crush because I have a Surge up, and I can discard one of the blues, and then block with Crater Fist and Sink Below, and throw a Naked Crippling Crush at him. Which should be good enough to take all the tempo away from him. Um, he doesn't even have Flick Flack to impact our Sink Below. If he did, we would have just discarded the Sink Below and blocked with the show time. And yeah, we have a Frailty token, so I guess our Crippling Crush is only for 10. He can give us two cards in Tunic to go to one if he really wanted to. But yeah, this game's looking a little tough for our opponents. He gives us spiders bite us, but we don't even have a single attack in our hand. So when he command and conquers us, we can block for three and throw a terror sender back. We could even just block for six and hammer him to death and probably win the game that way. But I like the terror sender line. Uh, we sacrifice a little life, but he has no arsenal, so we're only really afraid of Oasis Respite, and Oasis Respite would still take three cards out of his hand, because he'd have to block with a card, pitch a card, and then play the Oasis. 
Um, and if he doesn't have Oasis, he's just got to block with Tunic and a card to not die. And at this point, we almost have like 20 more cards in our deck than him. He's got 5, we have 24. So he goes down to one with only one card, and this game, at this point, could probably be won any, any way you wanted to win it. He just arsenals pass. We get to throw 10 Dominate, which beats anything except double Oasis. And honestly, just beats anything, I'm sure. Um, he wouldn't die this turn, but he will die on a different turn. Oh, I forgot about the Sigil. So he gets a sigil, but it still dies. Missouri is a really close matchup. I think I'm not even sure who's favored in the matchup. I think it's pretty 50-50. Maybe it's like 52-48 Missouri. Just because they can disrupt our turns with much smaller hands, and we can't do anything to disrupt their turns with smaller hands. Um, our weapon has a higher fatigue rate just because it just does more damage. Um, off a one card hand we can threaten four. If they have a one card hand they can really only threaten three with a stealth attack. But that fatigues them a card. Or they can uh, just swing with a dagger for one, which is clearly much less than four. So I don't know, it's tough. I also think whoever goes first has a big advantage because if Azuri goes first and has like an isolate into a six, they leak damage. If we go first and dominate, um, they leak damage. Person who gets to go first gets to put an arsenal in, or put a reaction in arsenal. Um, trying to think if there's anything cheeky that Azuri can do turn one on the play. I think it's basically just uh, try to dagger ping us and isolate dominate us but we have a little we have a few more things we can do we can play like a showtime we can play an imposing visage and we could leak damage with pommel um, I guess they do get tunic value going first though so I think going first is very important in this matchup managing your life total is very important in this matchup um, and basically those are it. Just have good strong fundamentals. Uh, don't overblock if you don't have to. Sometimes just making them have it is fine. Um, overblocking and getting shredded anyway isn't good. So always just kind of stay mindful of their hand size and what they can, what they're threatening. And uh, play around codex when you can, even though it's pretty tough because. Playing around Codex basically means having a card in Arsenal, and having a card in Arsenal is not that good against Azuri. So maybe scratch that. Maybe don't play around Codex. Maybe play around their Arsenal Disruption because they have three Command and Conquer, three Leave No Witnesses, and three Codex. But they really, they really only have uh, the three Codex to punish you for not having an Arsenal. So hopefully this game was fun. Hopefully we all learned a lot. Like, comment, and subscribe. All that good stuff. And I look forward to seeing you next week when I bring you more gameplay. Thanks.